Hey everybody and welcome to our BPM Plus virtual coffee. I'm Denis Garnier, CEO and CTO of Trizotech. And today's topic introduction uh, to the virtual coffee session is a five minute intro to DMN. So let me jump right into the topic. So DMN is the decision model annotation and DMN is a specification uh, published by the object management group. You can find uh, the actual specification freely and openly at the URL at the bottom here. Uh, DMN is a visual notation and it basically offers you a simple visualization, what we call the notation of business decision and both the requirements for the decision and the decision logic for the decision. In DMN, the decision requirement are depicted in what we call the decision requirement diagram which is a visual way of organizing the dependencies between the decision, sub-decision, and the various data that you're using in your decision. We also uh, depict the actual decision logic using what's called box expression, and we have a whole set of different box expression we can use in uh, depicting our logic and capturing the logic. Uh, DMN is really meant to complement BPMN and CMMN, uh, basically, you can think of BPMN processes consuming DMN decision or CMMN case uh, consuming DMN decision, which in turn DMN decisions are consuming data. So uh, there is a complementary relationship between the three standards that I've been referring to uh, for years now as the triple crown of process modeling. So DMN as easy as one, two, three. So DMN, the way of working with DMN is quite simple. Uh, the first thing you do is come up with the question and the answers, the possible answer to that question. And that's the core of your root decision. So let's say I want to find out uh, who should be responsible uh, for uh, the cost of this particular uh, car damage, uh, then the question would be who should be responsible? The possible answers would be, let's say, uh, the driver, a third party, uh, et cetera. And once I have that, I have my scope of decision. Then from there, I can decompose this decision into its decision requirement. What information or what sub decision do I need to make that decision? And finally, specify the decision logic of all these nodes. So more concretely, uh, a DMN model will look something like what you have here, where I have a decision one that is dependent on a decision two, which is itself dependent on input one and input two. Uh, and decision one is not only dependent on decision two, but also another input three. So the square shapes are the decision, the oval shapes are the data input or the input information, and the arrows are showing requirement. In this particular here, an information requirement. And here we have a knowledge requirement where we can have a business knowledge model, which is basically reusable decision logic that we're bringing into the decision. Generally speaking, your logic will be expressed using box expression, uh, Decision table here that is shown here is a particular case or a particular style of box expression that allows you to capture your decision logic. So, FIEL, what is FIEL? So, FIEL stands for Friendly Enough Expression Language, and this is the expression language that is used within DMN or specified as part of the DMN standard. What is very interesting about FIEL is that it is a standardized expression language. Uh, we hear a lot, a lot about low code and no code these days, uh, but all these approaches are relying on proprietary expression language. Uh, but we do have a standard for it and it's called FIEL. So it provides you with a standard syntax and execution semantic. And the claim is that it's simple enough for non-technical people, but expressive enough for technical people. So what are some of the characteristics of feel? Uh, feel is a functional expression language. It's stateless, it's side effectless, and it's context sensitive. A lot of very fancy words to say some very simple things. 
functional means that we compute the value, the resulting value from the inputs provided. Statelet means that uh, the variables are immutable. So once we have the data, we're done. Uh, side effect less means that we have a closed world uh, assumption. There is no other effect than providing you with a result. And context sensitive means that we can use terms that are uh, using space in them. And that's quite interesting and important because it allows us to create or write expression that are closer to natural language in how we express the logic. So give you a little bit more details. Here's our, what box expression are. It's a basic recursive construct of a name and an expression. So here we have a literal, so we have the name and its expression, and we can build up on the structure where I have a name, its expression, a name, and this particular Expression is built up of two names with their own sub expression. So it's a recursive pattern of defining this. Now we have different types of box expression. I invite you to get acquainted with DMN and see the full expressiveness of the language. Uh, and let me show you a very simple example. Uh, here's a natural language policy that says the loan monthly installment is obtained by adding the loan monthly fee and the loan monthly repayment. A standard loan carries a $20 monthly fee, while a special loan carries a $25 monthly fee, and the loan monthly repair, repayment is calculated based on the loan rate, term, and amount using the standard financial monthly payment function. So this simple policy or guidelines or whatever you may want to call it, express in actual language, we would then uh, create this box expression for it. So basically my loan monthly installment uh, is provided by the loan monthly fee plus the loan monthly repayment. And the loan monthly fee is defined with a conditional that if it's a standard loan, it's $20, else if it's a special loan, it's $25, otherwise it's zero. And the loan monthly repayment is basically an invocation from a financial payment function uh, with the rate terms and amount provided. So you can see how the natural language, and I've put in comments here, the natural language statement from the policy we just read. It makes it very simple for anybody to understand. And this portion here is because I've created this into a function. So this is a function that is defined now that I can reuse. So the loan monthly installment function has these four parameters and it's giving me this logic. So you can see how it's very easy to capture uh, the logic of your decision in a language that is close to natural language. So fundamentally DMN in a nutshell, DMN is all about decision which are expressed using rules. These rules apply data in context, which gives us knowledge. It's a functional type of language and it's based on a first order uh, logic. So that is my five minute introduction to DMN. Uh, here are a couple of books you may be interested in that we recommend, the DMN method and style and the DMN cookbook. There's also different trainings that are available. So thank you for your attention and to this uh, quick intro to DMN. Have a great day. So we can stop the recording now.